on this video, we're gonna compare the Hisense U7N to the upgraded Hisense U8N. Both of these TVs have the same processor, the same features, but there's some differences that's gonna stand apart between the two models. But the question is, which TV is the best for your hard earned money? But what it really comes down to is, are you willing to spend more money for better performance? And I will say that the U8N is that much better when it comes to brightness and a few other things, but we'll get into demos a little bit later. Now, I'm not gonna go over the design of everything, but the U7N has got this floating base, the same as the U8N. Uh, the U7N has a subwoofer on the back, so is the U8N, but we'll get into some audio tests and there is a difference there. Also, when it comes to local dimming zones, you're looking at 384 on this 65 inch versus 1600. Now, local dimming zone is gonna make sure that you have better inky contrast ratio, but does that really dictates whenever you look at the pictures and we'll check that out a little bit later. The other difference between these two TV is brightness. We're talking about up to 1500 of peak brightness on this one when it comes to nits, and we're talking up to 3000 of peak brightness on this one when it comes to nits. So we're talking about TV that can get twice as bright, but how does that play out whenever we actually see it in action? With that being said, uh, let's get into it. Before we get to this video, I just wanna let you know that I did put both televisions in the exact same picture mode anytime you see any type of scene comparing the two pictures. For example, if the TV's in theater day mode, it's gonna be on both televisions from the factory settings, and that would be the same for sports or gaming or anything that you see on this video. With that being said, let's start to compare them so you can see that differences and see if it's worth you paying more money for the U8N. So here's an example of the viewing angles, and for me, both TVs look very similar. The 65 inch on both models are vertical alignment panels, so again, you have that inky contrast ratio, but when it comes to viewing angle, it's not gonna be as good as an IPS panel. Next, I want to do a glare test, and the U7N has a semi-gloss coating on it, and the U8N has an anti-glare matte finish on it. Even though the U8N will reflect light a little bit better than the U7N, I think when it comes to a bright room, you'll be fine with either television, but the U8N is just gonna be a little bit better. Now, when it comes to audio system, the U7N has a 10 watt by two speaker system here at the bottom, and on the back of it, there's a 20 watt subwoofer. Now, when it comes to the U8N, this one has two five watt tweeters, two 10 watt bottom speakers, and it has a subwoofer as well. So it's gonna be able to immerse you a little bit better into a surround sound scenario whenever you're watching movies on it. But here's a listen to it so you can check it out for yourself. Keep in mind, put headphones in if you want the sound just a little bit better. Like a man without an pain. Like a song without a refrain. Now watching these TVs in sporting mode, I will say that the U8N has a lot of benefits. As you notice, it is much brighter and more colorful than the U7N. In my opinion, I think it's worth paying that little extra money to get that brightness and color differences between these two televisions. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why do I need 3000 nits? TVs years ago was only 1000 nits. And I want to show you the SDR content on both televisions to show you that difference in brightness between the two TVs. But not only that, when we switched over to HDR, you can definitely see even more details coming through. And the U8N was so bright that it blew out my cameras, but the picture is something that you can see. It's just the titles on the screen. You might not think that you need the brighter screen in the U8N, but I will tell you with some content, those extra nits brightness is gonna really make the TV shine so you can see all the details. I will tell you that the U7N is bright, but it just simply can't keep up with the U8N. Since both TVs have the same settings and pretty much the processor, I will tell you that you're not gonna see too much difference in upscaling. The motion rate on both TVs can support up to 144 Hertz on input three and four, and both TVs have a motion rate up to 480 Hertz, and that's gonna smooth out any type of 24 frames per second movies or even help you out in your gaming. 
Now, even though you can play 480p content on both televisions, but of course, 4K is the best to get full resolution out of these televisions. Now, I also did a blooming test on both televisions and the fact that these are VA panels, I didn't see any type of ghosting or halo effects where it's gonna throw off the picture. But unfortunately, I don't have an ADS IPS panel that I can check out to see if that particular model performs the same. But these VA panels work really well. for you to communicate with me besides talking so loudly? Uh, take this. It is a novelty Freddy Fast Watch. So that's all we have on this video. And keep in mind, if you're looking at the U7N and you're thinking about the U8N, I think if you want a brighter picture, a little bit better contrast, better audio system, then spend a little bit more money and get this television. But I think for the average person, the U7N really packs a punch. It has a lot of great features. The performance on it is phenomenal. And if you think about the price point of this, and I'll leave all those links in the description below, compared to some other brands, you get a lot of bang for your buck is what I'm trying to say. With that being said, if you want to take it up a notch, definitely go with the U8N. I really love this television. I love the fact that it's bright and the fact that the details on HDR are phenomenal. But again, that's my particular taste. If you're on a budget, you're not going to go wrong. So with that being said, that's all I have on this video. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I just purchased five more TVs. So we're gonna go to some smaller televisions for a little bit, just because I wanna get some more content out there for Christmas time. So if you're looking for like the entry level Samsung, the entry level LG, and some of those TVs, stick around because I'll be doing those videos very soon. I'm Tech Steve, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.